In this example, we're asked to compute the path integral, integral along path C f dot dr, where the vector field is given by this formula, and the curve is, or the path, is any positively oriented Jordan curve that encloses the origin. So let's start by looking at this vector field. We This one's given to us in ij form, but we can write this in component form as 2xy over x squared plus y squared quantity squared, and then y squared minus x squared over x squared plus y squared, again, quantity squared. Okay, and notice that this vector field is defined and continuous everywhere except for one point, and that one point happens to be the point where x equals y equals zero. Okay, so that's the origin. So this vector field f is well defined, continuous, it's nice, everywhere except for at that point. That's the one point that makes the denominator equal zero. Um, as we know from rational function theory, um, the function will be continuous everywhere else. So actually this fact that our curve encloses the origin um, it's going to have a lot to do so the value of this integral is going to have a lot to do with this fact that the vector field is nice uh, everywhere except for at this point now when i say nice um, what do i mean well hopefully i mean that it's really really nice as in conservative so let's check let's let's remember our component functions we call p and q let's take these the appropriate partial derivatives and compare so the partial derivatives we need to compute are dp by dy, and so this is going to be a quotient rule, right? But this is going to be x squared plus y squared quantity squared times the y derivative in the numerator, so 2x minus 2xy times derivative of the denominator uh, with respect to y, so that's a chain rule. And then this is all over x squared plus y squared quantity to the fourth, squared squared, right? And at this point, we can kind of simplify, factor out some like terms in the top, and then combine it all into a single single uh, term, or at least maybe a factored term. But we can take out, we see, a 2x from each term. And we can take out an x squared. Sorry, x squared plus y squared, right? That's the term that I took out. And then what's left here is we have x squared plus y squared minus, we took out this 2x, right? So minus 2y times 2y, so minus 4y squared. All right, and this is all over the denominator, which is x squared plus y squared quantity to the fourth, and that can be reduced. We have a copy here, right? So that can be reduced. Again, we're assuming we are working every, at every point except for this point, right? So we're not here, not here right? Um, and in that case, we can make this cancellation. And so what we end up with then is dp by dy is equal to um, 2x times what this reduces or f combines to be x squared minus 3y squared all over x squared plus y squared quantity cubed. Okay, so this is our dp by dy. Well, we also have to compute dq by dx, remember, this, we're just checking to see if this vector field is continue, or sorry, conservative, but conservative vector fields uh, are really nice in terms of Green's theorem because the, what we compute is exactly the same as Green's theorem, integrand. So let's compute this now. dq by dx, again, is a quotient rule, but now it's with respect to x. So this is going to be x squared plus y squared quantity squared times the derivative of the numerator with respect to x. So that's a minus 2x minus the numerator y squared minus x squared times derivative of the de denominator with respect to x. So that's just the same as what we did before except the chain rules with respect to x, right? This is all over again x squared plus y squared quantity to the fourth. And we do the same trick here or deal with the same steps here, right? We factor out like terms. So let's see and we're hoping that it looks something like this at the end. So let's just take out the 2x. I'll cross them off. And let's take out again x squared plus y squared. And let's see what we have left now. So what's left? We have x squared plus y squared negative though. Don't forget this negative sign. So really we have minus x squared minus y squared. And then on this side we have 2, right? Minus 2y squared plus 2x squared. So just make sure you get all the terms as you do this. And now in the denominator, we still have the same term, 
But we can, we again, we're trying to, we're hoping it looks like this. We can't force it, but we're hoping it looks like this. And so we make the same reduction, and we're going to add this up, and look at what we get. So we end up with dq by dx is equal to 2x times, what's in the numerator? Uh, 2x squared minus x squared, that's 1x squared, minus 1 minus 2, so minus 3y squared, all over x squared plus y squared, quantity cubed. Look at this. These are the same, right? So what does this mean? We've got dq dx equals dp dy, but I'm going to write it like this, minus dp dy is equal to zero, right? So this tells us two things. Number one, f is conservative. f is conservative on um, its domain. All right? And number two, if we try to apply Green's theorem on, on f's domain, then we're going to get some nice properties here because this is the exact integrand in the double integral portion of Green's theorem. Now, before we try to apply Green's theorem, we need to be a little more careful because the origin is not in the domain. So Green's theorem does not apply to just the plane in general, right? The, the total plane because of this fact right here. I wrote not here. What, I, what do I mean? I mean, it's not in the domain, right? So the domain of this vector field is every point except the origin. So let's go back to this idea now that our curve is a positively oriented path, Jordan path, uh, that encloses the origin, but therefore it does not pass through the origin if it encloses the origin, right? So let's sketch our curve. So we have our Jordan region, our Jordan curve, I should say, which is a positively oriented curve, which does something, can be as crazy as we want, as long as it's a Jordan curve, right? And positively oriented means it's going like this. It encloses the origin. All right, so this is our curve C. And what we can do then is we can now, because this curve encloses the origin, that means that even if these points are really, really close to the origin, we have room to draw a tiny, possibly tiny, circle centered at the origin, okay? We can orient it this way. We'll just call this C with a hat, okay? And this, this curve C hat is totally enclosed inside of the region bounded by C. And what we can do then is we can apply Green's theorem to this, the, when I say this, we, sh we can apply the extended Green's theorem to the region that is enclosed between these two curves because if we cut out this tiny circle, then um, then the point where the vector field is, quote, bad is not included in our region D. All right, so this is our region D. So D is equal to the region enclosed by um, C and C hat, but really what have I done here? I've oriented both of these positively, right? And so actually D is the region enclosed by C, what the region whose boundary curves are C minus C hat, or C bar, okay? And I shouldn't say this is equal, I mean the boundary, right? The boundary is C minus C bar. All right, but Green's theorem applies here. So Green's theorem extended, we should say, the extended Green's theorem applies to D, and look what it tells us. So remember, the Green's theorem says the double integral over this region D of dq by dx minus dp by dy dA, this is equal to the path integral around the boundary. So I'm going to write boundary D, right? Over here, that's a better way to say this, right? Boundary D is equal to this difference of F dotted with dr, Okay, but what have we shown? Since our vector field is conservative, this is zero, this difference is zero, and therefore this entire integral is zero, right? So this entire integral is equal to zero, and therefore the integral around the boundary, which this is a two component boundary now, but the integral around the boundary, f dot dr, is equal to zero. Well, let's think about this, okay? So the integral around the boundary, of f dotted with dr is actually the sum of these two integrals. It's the sum of the integral around the outer boundary, c, f dot dr, plus the integral around the inner boundary, which remember is minus c hat, f dot dr. And if this is zero, then that means that actually the integral around the outer curve, this generic curve that encloses the 
origin is equal to the integral around any curve, any closed curve C, remember the C hat, C bar, is a tiny circle that we chose, right, that's inside of C. So the integral around the outer curve is equal to the integral around any inner curve, any tiny circle that encloses the origin. All right, and so what this tells us then is that we are allowed to, in this case, instead of having to compute the integral over any generic curve that encloses the origin, we can just focus on this curve C bar. And C bar is a circle, right? So C bar is a circle. And so let's just take that to be the unit circle. So in math, we say without loss of generality. So we're not gonna lose any information by making this assumption. Um, we can say, let C bar be the unit circle. All right, and what we need to do now is compute TBC. To be computed, we need to compute the integral around the unit circle of our vector field f dot dr. Okay, and then whatever we get for that integral will be the answer to the integral for around any closed curve that encloses the origin, right? Any Jordan curve that encloses the origin will have the same value of its path integral. So that's what we do. So let's parameterize our circle then. C bar is going to be equal to, uh, well, let's say it this way, x is equal to cosine t, y is equal to sine of t. And then we need to write our integrand in terms of this, right? So, by the way, x squared plus y squared is just equal to 1, right? And therefore, x squared plus y squared squared is also equal to 1. So really what we have to do in evaluating this integral, these, these two terms are going to just be ones. We just have to work out the numerators, right? So we have 2xy for the p component and y squared minus x squared for the q component. And let's see what happens. So 2x, so p is equal to 2xy, which is going to be 2 times cosine of t times sine of t, which is, of course, sine of 2t. And q is equal to y squared minus x squared, which is sine squared t minus cosine squared t. And this is, of course, minus cosine of 2t, trig identities, right? And so we have one more thing that we should do here. Um, our dx is going to be minus, right, minus sine of t dt. And our dy is going to be positive cosine of t dt. So our path integral is very nice now. Integral over c bar, f dot dr, is equal to the integral, 0 to 2 pi, of p dx plus q dy. And so this is going to be what? Maybe we should have left it the way it was here, right? So 0 to 2 pi. Um, multiplying this through, the problem is that these have just sine of t, cosine of t. The, the extra step that I did here, these are true. Um, these two identities are true, but I'm not sure they're going to help us because what are we left with here? We, If we multiply this through, this becomes minus 2 cosine of t sine squared t, right? Uh, dt, but I'm going to leave the dt off at the end. And then plus q dy, so that's going to be cosine times all this, right? So that's going to be plus... Uh, cosine t sine squared t minus cosine cubed t dt. Here we see these two combine and we just get a negative one of these, right? So 0 to 2 pi, we get negative cosine t sine squared t. Here we probably want to replace cosine, one, two of the cosines, cosine squared, by 1 minus sine squared t. Leave the other cosine here, and then see what happens, right? So we now have what? Minus cosine of t, sine squared t. This is just a simple trig integral, but it takes a little writing, right? Minus cosine of t, plus this one becomes cosine t, sine squared t, dt. And we see these two cancel, and all we have left is this minus cosine of t. Okay, so we need to integrate from 0 to 2 pi cosine of t dt. And this is, of course, going to give us minus sine of t 0 to 2 pi, but that's just 0. All right, and so what we have shown then is that the 
path integral around any path for this vector field that encloses the origin, so around any closed path, Jordan path, that encloses the origin, the integral around this path of f dot dr is equal to zero. The reason is because it's a multi-step process. First we had to show that the integral around every path has the same value, right? And then we could just use the unit circle to compute that value, and we ended up with this, that the value is zero.